Welcome. In this module, we're going to take a look at CIS control number 17, security awareness and training, and this is the second part of the series, implement a security awareness and training program. This is the CIS controls layout for version seven. We're now talking about the organizational controls, and we are now in the first of the organizational controls. This is the system entity relationship diagram. With the help of user assessments and education plans and training plans, we will be uh, making sure that the awareness and training is implemented for the workforce members. Control 17.5 tells us, train workforce on secure authentication. Train workforce members on the importance of enabling and utilizing secure authentication. So um, whenever there's an authentication system, we need to make sure that the policy is communicated to the members. For example, the password policy, uh, which consists of uh, uppercase, lowercase, numeric, and a special character, and the need to change the password after every, let's say, uh, 30 days or 45 days or 60 days or 90 days, whatever the policy of your organization is. We need to make sure that your workforce is trained or at least made aware of what the mechanism is for secure authentication so that they're able to understand it and they don't have difficulty in understanding and implementing it. 17.6, train workforce on identifying social engineering attacks. So social engineering attacks are a mechanism which malicious users, um, uh, disgruntled employees, or actual hackers use to get information. For example, there could be a user sitting at a computer and uh, he or she may receive a call saying, I'm calling from the IT support desk and can you please tell me your login and password because there's a, there's a problem with your system. So that is a type of social engineering attack and we should be very, very, very careful that the training and awareness is there to make sure that our staff uh, does not fall prey to social engineering attacks. Train the workforce on how to identify different forms of social engineering attacks, such as phishing, which is the e on the email, phishing attacks, phone scams, and impersonation calls, or such emails as well. 17.7, train workforce on sensitive data handling. Now, sensitive data needs to be handled in a particular manner. If you print out a sensitive document, you need to go out and pick it up from the uh, from the printer as well, and those should be designated special printers in a secure area on which confidential um, uh, prints are being taken. And uh, so that's a training. You should not leave the sensitive documents or confidential documents lying in the printer for somebody to go and pick up uh, before you, because usually the printers are lying in a team environment and the whole floor may have two or three printers, the whole floor of the office. So we need to make sure that we, we, need to, we train the workforce on sensitive um, document printing, for example. Uh, train workforce on how to identify and properly store transfer, archive, and destroy sensitive information which is classified as confidential. 17.8, train workforce on causes of unintentional data exposure. So train the workforce members to be aware of causes for unintentional data exposure such as losing their mobile devices or emailing the wrong person due to autocomplete in email. So this could happen that data exposure takes place unintentionally, but then the information needs to be passed on to the information security team so that they may try to recover from that situation or at least they can take measures to, uh, uh, to make sure that no further damage is done. 17.9, train workforce members on identifying and reporting incidents. Now this is very important because incident management is a core part of the information security program and if information security incidents are not reported, then uh, they will, uh, or if there is no practice to make sure that users are reporting information security incidents, then the security team or the information security team or uh, other parts of the organization will not even know that an incident has taken place and then they cannot take the correct measures. So train employees to be able to identify the most common indicators of an incident and be able to report such an incident so that the incident management process can be kick-started or can be, uh, can, be, um, can be started once an incident is reported. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.